I've been dating my girlfriend for a few months, and while our time together is amazing, I'm feeling conflicted. We make future plans, go on great dates, and enjoy a strong connection, but she often cuts our time short to hang out with her friends, which makes me feel insecure. Despite her constant reassurance and love, I find it challenging when she doesn't invite me to plans made in front of me, prioritizes her friends over our time together, and frequently cancels our plans. Although she's honest and upfront, her behavior with certain friends, particularly one who encourages questionable actions, adds to my discomfort. I'm struggling with feeling sidelined despite our strong bond. I've been in about three long-term relationships before her, one for three years, one for two years, and another for eight years. In all those relationships, we did most things together. We had our independent days where we would do activities with friends, but for the most part, we were all inseparable. It was great, but none of us ended up seeing each other as potential marriage partners. I ended all three. The thing that is different with my current girlfriend is that I feel like she is always dropping ending our time together early to hang out with her friends, guys, and girls. I completely respect this and want her to have her independent time without me seeming clingy. But it kind of bums me out sometimes. It makes me feel a little weird, insecure. Here are some recent scenarios. One, recently she, her brother and sister, and her sister's boyfriend, whom I all love, came up to my camper in the mountains for a weekend retreat, Friday to Saturday evening. This is an hour and a half away from the nearest city downtown. Midday Saturday, she goes, oh, I'm gonna meet Alexis for dinner. Mind you, she saw Alexis Monday for the entire day, Wednesday for a friend dinner, Thursday to go out to the bars, and then again Saturday, to me, it's like, you're already up here. There are so many fun things we could do here. Why not just hang out and enjoy the weekend up here? Especially since you've seen this girl now four out of the last six days. Additionally, on Thursday, we all went out together because it was Fleet Week. Navy guys port in town and go out. And Alexis wanted to flirt with Navy guys. My girlfriend invited me to go out with them because Alexis said she wanted her and my girlfriend to go out and flirt with Navy guys. My girlfriend made it clear she is in a relationship and said that makes her uncomfortable and asked if she could invite me so it wouldn't be disrespectful to our relationship, which I tremendously appreciate. However, it's weird that she and the same friend who pushes her to cheat then went out Saturday night for dinner downtown during the same fleet week on an even bigger party night. Too. She always talks about how social she is and the more the merrier and that I'm always invited to anything she does and that she loves making plans. However, she regularly makes plans with all her friends, brother and sister right in front of me and then never extends the invite to me. This happens regularly, if not every single time we are together. One time they all decided that six of them were going to do a day trip to Idaho to explore right in front of me with no invite. The next time they all made plans to go in hot air balloons right in front of me, no invite. Another time they made big dinner plans for their friend group, brother and sister right in front of me. No invite. Recently, a couple we are friends with, her brother, her sister, and her boyfriend, and then my girlfriend and her brother went on a camping trip for the weekend. Her sister was like, OMG, my name, you should totally come. But I decided not to because the invite wasn't from my girlfriend. I told her that and she was like, oh, that's so sweet, instead of inviting me. Then when she got back, she was like, all my friends were like, this would be so much more fun with my name. Wish he was here. Three, when we are hanging out in the city about an hour from here, and she lives about 45 minutes from the city and only 45 from me, she will be like, Ugh, I want to just come home and cuddle up and sleep with you so bad. And I'll be like, do it. And then she'll be like, no. And then go home, but be like, I'll come over tomorrow night. I miss sleeping in the same bed as you. Then she will fill her day with her friend Alexis and cancel that night. She has done this a few times, then messages me when she's home and says, Ugh, I wish I was with you so bad. Four. Many times when we have a day together alone or finally have an evening together, it seems to end up with us going and hanging out with her brother or a friend because she feels bad and wants to show them she cares. I feel like our time constantly has to be put on the back burner and filled with seeing other people or her running off to hang out with other groups of people. 
Even the Friday before she came up to hang out for the weekend, before ditching me Saturday, she drove three hours north to go on a hike with an acquaintance visiting from New Zealand, then got there at eight. She has her Fridays off and we could have spent the day doing fun stuff together. We planned a trip to Los Angeles for the end of June and every single day is with her friends. For Memorial Day weekend, we spent five days straight together and every single day was something with her friends. It's like she is incapable of having one. One time together, if we go out for a date night later in the night, we end up hanging out with her friends. I understand people like to have their boys night or girls night. And once again, I respect that and want her to freely have that. But when she goes out for a girls night, there are like three other guy friends with them. None of which am I intimidated by or worry that she's going to cheat with or anything like that. But you know, it's like for one, that's not really a girl's night. And for two, her friends constantly are like, bring my name, we love my name, etc. Or when she's out, she will text me and say, everyone misses you, says hi, and wishes you were here. Additionally, it's super uncomfortable that she goes out late at night, so much with her friend who says heinous things about cheating on me. Her entire friend group and family hate this girl because she's an absolute mess and has been known to completely ditch her late at night when she is drunk or alone downtown just out of the blue. One time we were out and her friend Alexis invited six separate guys from her roster, gross, out to see what would happen. All six showed up and it was awkward as hell. Then that same night, her other friend, who was there with her boyfriend, was getting calls from some sugar daddy offering her and my girlfriend $2,000 to do weird stuff. Given, my girlfriend immediately tells me about all these things and is super upfront and honest about it all, but it's seriously so uncomfortably confusing and definitely doesn't help my brain feel settled when she is out late at night with these girls. To add, I will give her this benefit of the doubt. One, she is always very honest and upfront with me anytime her friends say something strange or uncomfortable. Two, she doesn't really drink when she goes out. Often she gets mocktails. Three, she's had hardly any intimacy partners. And even when we started dating, we waited two months to have intimacy, which she said she typically waits two, three months when dating someone. Even her sister has had one partner her entire life. So definitely green flags. I've always made myself available when she does invite me, and I've never complained or done anything to make her think I wouldn't want to go out with her and her friends. When I go out with my friends, I almost always invite her because I love being with her. My friends always tell me to invite her when they invite me to do something. Same with her friends. They always tell her to invite me or ask where I'm at when I'm not there, but she won't invite me. She said one time, about three weeks ago, that she is scared by how much she likes me and is trying to pace herself because she doesn't want to jump in too quickly and be impulsive like she has in past relationships. Once again, I get and respect that, but it's just like, I love this girl and she says she loves me. So why not hang out when we have the chance? Why always cut things short to go hang out with someone else? Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one, you should see the comments on TikTok and everyone says run and that she thinks you're being cheated on. I believe that there's a huge conversation that needs to be had. And I also believe that there's something she's not telling you. Maybe sit down and talk to her about this situation and ask her why she doesn't like spending time with you as much as everyone else. I also believe that since you mentioned it's early on in the relationship, remember what you value for a relationship. And if she doesn't agree with that, then you guys might not be the best match. Yeah, a girl can go out and do things with her friends and family all the time, that's fine. But she needs to be prioritizing your needs just as much as her friends. Maybe family can have the spotlight more at some points, but there should be a pretty even balance. I would consider what you want out of this and if this relationship is truly fulfilling you in every other way, you should figure this out sooner rather than later. Good luck, OP. I'm really interested to figure out if she genuinely just likes hanging out with her friends a lot or if there's more she's not telling you. Comment two. I'm always invited to anything she does and that she loves making plans. She already told you that you are always invited to whatever she does. So if she doesn't directly invite you, do you think that she doesn't actually want you to come Maybe ask her for some reassurance in that regard. Overall, things seem fine. She sounds like the kind of person who loves going out and being around lots of people. 
I don't think it has anything to do with you, but that she enjoys being with a group, with you included. If you enjoy more one-on-one -on -one solo time, tell her you'd like to do that more. Personally, I wouldn't want to date someone who is extroverted and always going out and likes groups. But I don't think you should try to change her either. There may be someone more compatible for you. Talk to her, though. That baseball game is a good example. I feel confused and alone when you told me that you were so excited to see me. But when the game was canceled, you didn't want to see me. I know you aren't thinking this, but I'd like reassurance that you are excited to see me and not just the game. See what she says. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for reading. So a lot has happened over the past week and things have gotten pretty intense. Last Sunday, we had planned to spend the entire day together. We were supposed to go hiking in the morning, have lunch at this cute little cafe we both love, and then just chill at my place. But as usual, she cut our plans short. Around noon, she got a call from Alexis, who was apparently having some sort of crisis. My girlfriend said she had to go help her out and promised she'd be back by dinner. I was disappointed, but tried to be understanding. Dinner time came and went, and she didn't show up. She texted me around 9 p.m. saying she was staying over at Alexis's place because it was too late to drive back. I was frustrated but didn't want to start a fight over text. The next day, I decided to talk to her about how I was feeling. I told her that I felt sidelined, that it hurt, when she prioritized her friends over our plans. She listened and apologized, saying she didn't realize how much it was affecting me. She promised to make more of an effort to balance her time better. I felt hopeful, but that hope was short-lived. On Wednesday, we had plans to go to a concert together. I was really looking forward to it because it was one of our favorite bands. But just a few hours before the concert, she called me and said she couldn't make it. Alexis had gotten into some drama with her boyfriend, and my girlfriend felt she needed to be there for her. I was upset, but didn't want to guilt trip her. So I told her it was okay. I ended up going to the concert alone and it just wasn't the same without her. By Friday, I was feeling pretty down about everything. We had planned a weekend getaway to a cabin in the woods, just the two of us. I was hoping this would be a chance for us to reconnect and spend some quality time together. But on Friday morning, she called me and said she couldn't go. Her brother had surprised her with tickets to a sports game, and she felt bad turning him down. I was crushed. I'd been looking forward to this trip for weeks, and now it was ruined. That night, I decided I needed to make a hard choice. I couldn't keep feeling like this, constantly sidelined and unimportant. I loved her, but I needed to put myself first for once. I called her and told her we needed to talk. When she came over, I told her how much I cared about her, but that I couldn't keep doing this. I needed to feel like a priority in her life, and right now, I didn't. She was shocked and started crying, saying she didn't realize how much her actions were hurting me. She promised to change, but I had heard that before. I told her I needed some space to think things over. She begged me not to break up with her, but I told her I needed time to figure out what I wanted. She left in tears, and I felt like the worst person in the world. But I knew I had to do this for my own sanity. Over the weekend, I tried to distract myself by hanging out with friends and doing things I enjoyed, but I couldn't stop thinking about her. I missed her so much, but I also knew I couldn't keep living like this. On Sunday night, I got a text from her saying she missed me and wanted to talk. I agreed to meet up with her on Monday. When we met up, she looked exhausted. She told me she had been thinking a lot about what I said and realized she had been taking me for granted. She promised to make more of an effort to include me in her plans and to prioritize our relationship. I wanted to believe her, but I was still hesitant. I told her I needed to see real changes before I could fully trust her again. We decided to give it another shot, but things were still rocky. She did make more of an effort to include me in her plans, but there were still times when she would cancel on me last minute to hang out with her friends. It was like she couldn't fully let go of her old habits. One night, we were supposed to have a date night, but she canceled again because Alexis had another crisis. I was fed up and told her I couldn't do this anymore. She broke down and admitted that she was scared of losing her friends if she didn't prioritize them. She had always been the one to keep the group together, and she felt a lot of pressure to be there for everyone. I understood where she was coming from, but I also needed to feel like I was important to her. We decided to take a break to figure things out. 
It was one of the hardest decisions I've ever made, but I knew it was necessary. During the break, I had a lot of time to reflect on my past relationships. I realized that I had always been the one to end things because I felt like something was missing. I had never felt truly secure in any of my relationships, and I wondered if the problem was with me. I also thought a lot about my girlfriend's past. She had told me that she had been impulsive in her previous relationships and had jumped in too quickly. She was trying to pace herself with me because she didn't want to make the same mistakes. I appreciated her honesty, but it also made me realize that she was still figuring things out for herself. In the end, we decided to part ways. It was a mutual decision, but it still hurt like hell. I loved her, but I couldn't keep feeling like I was always second best. I needed to find someone who would make me feel like a priority, and she needed to figure out how to balance her friendships and relationships. Thanks for reading. Ada for suggesting marriage counseling. After my wife's explosive outbursts and being called oversensitive, married for a decade, no kids. I'm struggling with my wife's behavior. It's mostly when others aren't around. Sometimes she'll be explosive, but she brushes this off mostly, as being angry at a situation and not at me personally. I'm from a home with an emotionally hurtful father who would get angry at very minor things as such. Anyone raising their voice in the house puts me on high alert. A few weeks ago, I was in the rear garden with a friend chatting and didn't hear her at the front door. The dog didn't alert me either. My wife stormed through the back gate, loudly asking me if I was deaf or something. It doesn't sound like much when typing it back, but it was embarrassing to have your partner be angry at such a trivial thing while your friend visiting for the weekend is sitting there with you trying to have a nice conversation. She did message me later in the day saying she was sorry and she just got irrationally angry and then couldn't help it. She says she treats me like this because she's allowed herself to be more open with me because she loves me, but it's really starting to take a toll on me. I never raise my voice at her. I try to see things from her side, but I'm struggling. Recently, these incidents have been happening more often. I work from home and I'm on edge that little things will trigger her. She says I'm oversensitive and she won't walk on eggshells around me. I feel the opposite about her. I am on eggshells as I think she may explode at something if she's not in a good mood. For example, the other day while working from home, she asked me where a pair of her leggings were. I had put them in the wash the evening before after asking her for dirty clothes from a weekend we had spent away. She just loudly sighed and exclaimed, for Frick's sake. She says it's just anger at the situation, but her response makes me feel like I'd done something wrong. I currently work a very stressful job and work from home. I think the job-related stress is making me more sensitive, but I also think that these events are occurring more frequently. She currently doesn't work and has recently finished a 12-month course at the university, so we are in close proximity a lot of the time. She's been doing most of the housework as she's out of work, but leaves the mental load choosing what to eat to me and generally makes most of the mess. All this stuff seems negative, but she uses her words to frequently tell me she loves me. Her love language is words of affirmation, but this means her throwaway angry comments are additionally quite jarring to me. She has previously taken things I've said on board, like needing extra help around the house when I did most of the household labor. I am a problem solver, so anything that is wrong, I try to fix with us, her, myself. I need some perspective on whether I am oversensitive or she is being out of order. I love her, but I am starting to think we need marriage counseling. Almost forgot. Absolute wall of text, so. Now for a few comments before the update. Comment one. I hate this word because it is overused these days, but do not allow her to continue to gaslight you by saying you're oversensitive. It's an extremely manipulative thing to say, trying to make you question your own feelings. Your gut is telling you something is wrong. Listen to it. No one wants to walk on eggshells in their own home, and it is definitely your wife who is fostering this negative environment, not you. I've been here before, friend. Comment too. I have tried to talk about it, although it takes me a bit of time to build up to it. I either get an apology or get told I'm oversensitive, so overall nothing changes. Hence, I was thinking about marriage counseling. I have mentioned before that she was being disrespectful as well. But that just turned into an argument. Sigh. Now, for the update, 
Hey everyone, a lot has happened since my last post. Three days ago, my wife and I had a pretty intense argument. It started over something small, as usual. I was working from home, and she came into my office asking where her favorite mug was. I told her it was in the dishwasher, and she just snapped, saying she needed it for her tea, and why couldn't I have washed it by hand? I tried to explain that I was in the middle of a work call when I loaded the dishwasher, but she wasn't having it. She stormed out, and I could hear her banging things around in the kitchen. This kind of thing has been happening more and more, and it's really starting to wear me down. Later that evening, I tried to talk to her about it. I told her how her outbursts were affecting me, especially given my background with my father. She seemed to listen at first, but then she got defensive, saying I was making a big deal out of nothing and that I was too sensitive. She said she was just stressed because she hadn't found a job yet and felt like she was failing. I get that she's stressed, but it doesn't make it any easier to deal with her anger. The next day, I decided to take a break from work and go for a walk to clear my head. When I got back, I found her sitting on the couch, crying. She apologized for the way she's been acting and said she didn't know how to handle her stress. She admitted that she felt useless not having a job and that she was taking it out on me. I felt a mix of relief and sadness. It was good to hear her acknowledge the problem, but it hurt to see her so upset. We decided to spend the rest of the day together, trying to reconnect. We went out for lunch and talked about lighter things, trying to enjoy each other's company. But it felt like a step in the right direction, but I couldn't shake the feeling that we were just putting a band-aid on a much bigger issue. That night, as we were getting ready for bed, she brought up the idea of marriage counseling. I was surprised because she had always been against it, saying we could work things out on our own. But she said she realized that we needed help and that she was willing to try anything to make things better. I agreed feeling hopeful for the first time in a while. The following day, we started looking for a counselor. We found a few options and made some calls, setting up an appointment for later in the week. In the meantime, we tried to be more mindful of how we were treating each other. It wasn't perfect, but it felt like we were making an effort. But then, something unexpected happened. I got a call from my mother, who I hadn't spoken to in a while. She told me that my father had been diagnosed with a serious illness and that he didn't have much time left. I was hit with a wave of emotions, anger, sadness, confusion. I didn't know how to feel about it. My father and I had a complicated relationship, to say the least. When I told my wife, she was surprisingly supportive. She held me as I cried, something I hadn't done in years. She told me that we would get through this together and that she would be there for me no matter what. It was a bittersweet moment feeling her love and support while also grappling with the news about my father. As the days went on, I found myself thinking a lot about my past and how it had shaped me. I realized that my father's anger had left a deep scar, one that I had been carrying into my marriage. I started to see that my wife's outbursts, while hurtful, were not the same as my father's. She was struggling with her own issues, and I needed to find a way to support her while also taking care of myself. We had our first counseling session yesterday. It was tough, but it felt good to have a neutral third party helping us navigate our issues. The counselor pointed out that we both had a lot of unresolved pain and that we needed to work on communicating better. It was a lot to take in, but it felt like we were finally on the right path. In the midst of all this, I got another call from my mother. She told me that my father wanted to see me. I was torn. Part of me wanted to go and try to make peace, but another part of me was still so angry at him for everything he had put me through. I talked it over with my wife, and she encouraged me to go, saying that it might help me find some closure. So I'm planning to visit my father in a few days. I'm not sure what to expect, but I know that I need to do this for myself. My wife has been more understanding and supportive than I ever expected, and it's made me realize that we do have a strong foundation to build on. Thank you for reading. Ada for feeling betrayed. After my girlfriend met someone else in Spain and decided to stay, my girlfriend and I have been together for over 4.5 years, but things are getting complicated at the moment. If you had asked me about my current situation a few months ago, I would not have believed you. My girlfriend is currently in Spain because of her studies. It was required to visit a foreign country for an apprenticeship. I live in Germany, by the way, and this has really changed our dynamic. 
To start, we had a wonderful relationship over the past few years. Humor, values, outlook on life, future plans, everything fit perfectly. I even have a great relationship with her parents, an extended family, almost as if I had always been a part of it. On an intimate level, she always had strong self-doubts due to her vaginismus, feeling that she didn't function the way she wished she did. I was able to support her by showing that it didn't matter to me and that I was willing to work through it with her, fully understanding her situation. On the other hand, I also always had self-doubts about my own intimacy performance and felt similar insecurities just from a male perspective. And she was able to alleviate some of my fears as well. We almost complimented each other in our dysfunctionality, which perhaps wasn't entirely healthy. I always knew that she wanted to travel. Due to my future career path, this wouldn't be possible for me in the same way, which is why we had discussed her traveling alone for half a year. I had no major issues with that. Well, since her stay in Spain, her plans have changed. She is considering traveling for one and a half years, moving to Spain for a while, or even emigrating. I know her well and understand that these are very impulsive thoughts that shouldn't be taken too seriously, but they are becoming more concrete. Perhaps this is also an escape from her studies as she no longer sees herself in her future profession. The problem now is that I feel like I am increasingly being pushed into the background. She has been away for four months and I could only visit her once for a few days, during which we talked about all of this. A breakup didn't feel right at that time. However, as her plans become more concrete and I no longer align with them, a breakup seems more and more inevitable. She herself says she cannot tell me at the moment where she sees herself in the future. And with this uncertainty, it makes no sense for me to continue the relationship, as I would like to start a family here in Germany. Due to the vaginismus issue and my personal insecurities, I am now having more thoughts on what to expect in potential future relationships. I am actually a fairly solid looking guy good at talking, with a good social circle, a good academic background, and a sense of humor, yes, everyone says that, I know, from whom one would not necessarily expect such a lack of experience. Of course, we had other ways, but not the conventional ones. I realize as I write this that the topic is taking a different turn, but these are just my thoughts. Some encouraging words would be appreciated, and perhaps you have thoughts and suggestions on how to better cope with this. Thank you. Now, for a few comments before the update. Comment one. Mate, I'll be honest, I think you should split up, but do it in an amicable way, because I genuinely think that you still love each other and could end up rekindling in the future once you both have experienced what you wanted to separately. Equally, if you don't get together further down the line, then it doesn't matter because you can both be happy, but also happy for each other. It's a win-win. Before making the decision, though, have a proper discussion about it and lay all the cards on the table. Comment two. I think a split is the right thing to do. There is nothing that's going to make it easier, but it's better to do it now when things are amicable than when resentment starts to grow on either side because your future goals no longer align. Now for the update. Hey everyone, thanks for sticking with me through this. So three days ago, I got a call from my girlfriend. She sounded different, more distant than usual. She told me she had met someone in Spain. At first I thought it was just a friend, but then she admitted it was more than that. She said they had a connection and that it made her question our relationship even more. I was stunned. I didn't know what to say. I felt a mix of anger, sadness, and confusion. She apologized and said she didn't want to hurt me, but she needed to be honest. I spent the next day in a daze, trying to process everything. I couldn't focus on work, and my mind kept replaying our conversation. I felt betrayed, but I also understood that she was in a different place, both physically and emotionally. I decided to call her back to get some clarity. We talked for hours, and she explained that this new person made her feel alive and adventurous, something she hadn't felt in a long time. She said it wasn't about replacing me, but about finding herself. That night, I couldn't sleep. I kept thinking about our past and all the good times we had. I realized that I had been holding on to a version of her that no longer existed. She had changed, and so had I. I started to think about my own life and what I wanted. I had always been supportive of her dreams, but what about mine? 
I wanted stability, a family, and a future in Germany. It became clear that our paths were diverging. The next day, I decided to talk to my best friend about everything. He listened patiently and then gave me some tough love. He said that I needed to focus on myself and my own happiness. He reminded me that I deserved someone who wanted the same things as me. It was hard to hear, but it was the truth. I realized that I had been so focused on making her happy that I had neglected my own needs. Later that evening, I got a message from her. She said she wanted to talk again. We had a video call and she looked different, more confident and sure of herself. She told me that she had decided to stay in Spain for another year. She said she needed this time to figure out her life and what she wanted. I could see the determination in her eyes and I knew that this was something she had to do. We talked about our relationship and what it meant for us. We both agreed that a breakup was inevitable. It was a painful conversation, but it was also honest. We acknowledged that we had grown apart and that it was time to let go. We promised to stay in touch and support each other, but we knew that things would never be the same. As we ended the call, I felt a sense of relief mixed with sadness. I knew it was the right decision, but it still hurt. I spent the next day reflecting on everything. I thought about our journey together and all the lessons I had learned. I realized that this experience had made me stronger and more self-aware. I knew that I had to focus on my own growth and happiness. In the days that followed, I started to make some changes in my life. I reconnected with old friends and started to explore new hobbies. I even signed up for a cooking class, something I'd always wanted to do. I began to see the possibilities for my future and started to feel hopeful again. I also took some time to reflect on my insecurities and how they had affected my relationships. I realized that I needed to work on my self-esteem and learn to love myself. I started to see a therapist and it has been incredibly helpful. I'm learning to be kinder to myself and to embrace my imperfections. As I look back on everything, I can see that this experience has been a turning point for me. It has forced me to confront my fears and insecurities and to take control of my own happiness. I'm still healing, but I know that I'm on the right path. Thank you for reading and for your support. If you like this video, you'll probably like these too. Also, while you're here, please consider subscribing. It's your support that keeps this channel alive and allows me to make better and longer videos. Have a great day.